Hey, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. We're joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is episode 87, Positive Subtotals. All right, uh, from YouTube, I want to know if there's a way that the grand total and subtotals would omit the negative subtotals, not the negative values, the negative subtotals. So he's talking about uh, data subtotal at each change in uh, region, let's say, and then sum up the sales. So anytime that the uh, total of the region is negative, like for example, West, we want to exclude that. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is funny because every time I'm talking about pivot tables, I complain about the, the following functionality and it's actually going to work in my favor this time. I love that. I, I've complained about this hundreds of times. Well, now I finally found a use where it's good. We're going to take this data, insert a pivot table, click OK. Let's uh, put region down the left hand side and sales in the uh, value area. And you see we get all of these items. But now, uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the filter. And I'm going to do a value filter and say uh, greater than or equal to 0. Click OK. And my complaint with this, see we have 341. Click OK. After doing the filter, it shows us the total of only the visible cells. When I'm doing a top 5 or a top 10 report, I really want to see the total of all of the customers. And so I have lots of tricks to get around that. But in this case, it's working out perfectly. It gives me the grand total uh, without the negative values. All right, Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Yeah, the pivot table is the way to go. Just, what, a couple clicks and boom, you have it. Uh, I guess if you wanted to keep the subtotals, then you got to figure out how to do it. Uh, get rid of the negative subtotals. All right, so if you have a data set, the trick to subtotals that you, is that you sort before you do subtotals. All right, I click in a single cell, and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt D B at each change in region. And each change in means it looks for a change in the sorted list and inserts a row. It'll have a blank cell, the word total, and then the actual subtotal function. We want to um, sum on that particular field, click OK. All right, so blank, to east total, and then the subtotal function. Come down here to the bottom, and sure enough, subtotal um, is adding this one, this one, and the negative ones. And so we need to get rid of that. Now, I would just uh, click in the cell and put a new formula, but I think I'll put it right here. So this will be a total without negative, right? And in 2007 and 10, there's a great new function, some ifs with an s. And it's great because you can have more than one uh, criteria. Well, our sum range, I'm going to highlight because we, we need to eventually get look at just the subtotals and then find just the subtotals without uh, a negative, comma. Now, the criteria, how do I isolate just the subtotals without a negative? Well, I'm going to notice that the subtotal feature puts in a column with the word total or a blank column. So I'm going to start with criteria range, and I'm going to highlight the same parallel range here. And comma, and then I need to look for the word total. Well, look, it says west total and midwest total. So I need to do an approximate search. So here's how you do it. You go double quotes, and asterisk means zero or more characters, and then the word total, and double quotes. So this says, please find any text string with total at the end. Now that will just give me the actual cells in this range that have the subtotal, but I need to specify one further criteria in this range here. I just need to say now find only values that are less than zero. All right, so this first criteria here would give me just the three, and once it has those, now it's going to eliminate any ones that are less than zero. I'm going to control enter, and uh, that's not less than, it's greater than, because it was adding just the uh, negative ones. Now it's greater than zero, and that will work. Now, let's just scoop this out here. We could alternatively, if we didn't want to do the total, we could use that same setup except for change one of the criteria. Now notice this is green. I can actually edit a formula by grabbing the edge and dragging it over. So now I'm going to look for not the cells with total, but the blank cells. And the criteria for empty cell, bl blank could be a 
lots of things, but empty meaning nothing in it is equal sign. Right, so that's another way. Still further, if you had, if you didn't have 2007 or 10, then you're going to be in trouble here. So I think if I put that right there, you could use the sum product. Now you could say is blank here, convert the trues and falses to ones and zeros, which sum product needs. And then you could do that same range, anything greater than zero, and double negatives to convert it to ones and zeros. And then this is the range of values. When it gets a one times one times the value, then the sum part of sum product adds. Alternatively, you could do look for total. I wouldn't do this one. I like that one with the blanks there much better. But search uh, looks for subtext strings within a text string. Um, once it returns the uh, position that found the word total, you need to then find out if it's a number. All right, so that's probably not a very good one. All right, uh, some ifs or some product with is blank. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, all right, Mike, some ifs, some product, and some blank. What a cool way to go. Still like the pivot table, though. Like you said, I took the good one first. Hey, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another. Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun.